Okay, um, so today we're going to talk about um, ethical dilemma in the workplace. Um, we're going to look at the different dilemmas that we encounter and also how do we make an ethical decision when we're faced with this kind of situation. Um, ethics is a very sensitive topic because sometimes the dilemmas we face can influence us to make a decision based on our self-interest. And you'll also realize that um, the best way to practice ethics is by first becoming aware of the situation that you're in. And then you try and employ um, moral reasoning to make a decision. So it's a balance of looking at the implications and situations and from, yeah, it's a balance of looking at the implications that from the situation that we're faced in and employing also strategic thinking into um, the scenarios that we face. And ethics is something that we experience on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we experience um, this ethics and it, it could be something simple like um, not telling your friend that he or she is doing the wrong thing because you're afraid it might ruin your friendship or things like that. So it's something that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we are aware that we're about to make a decision that um, that that is faced with a dilemma, I think it's best if we become aware of the situation first. So like telling us your mind, okay, we're faced with the situation and we have to, how, what's the best way to deal with it? Um, so there's this common um, scenario in workplaces about um, companies selling or someone in your company um, selling confidential data to a competitor simply because they've been given um, a very some some very good benefits for example like a huge amount of cash um, so in this situation and this person is your friend and you work together a colleague so what's the most ethical way to, to do what's the most ethical thing to do so would you remain silent so as to just um, continue being friends with um, with your colleague or are you going to report it to the management or how are you going to handle it if it was you? Thumbs up if you're going to remain silent and not betray your friend's trust. A report to the management. Okay, that's an ethical thing to do. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's a very ethical thing to do. And um, it's important that we employ moral reasoning whenever we're faced with such situations. And yeah, we try, yeah, we, we just try to employ moral reasoning to the scenarios we face. So basically, what ethics is, it's a sort of like a pre-written or pre-structured set of rules and um, or a documentation that just describes what is wrong and what is not wrong. And it's what humans um, rely on. So this could be they could be found in different places. It could be um, maybe a constitution. It could be um, it could be it could, ethics could also come from things like the Bible or um, whatever, whatever you read to, or company principles, company rules, company's code of conduct, things like that. So those are ethics that um, try to help us um, stay, like understand our rights, know what we are, what we ought to do, um, and also um, it's also built with the hope that it's going to be benefiting to the society or the company in its all. It also describes um, the kind of fairness that should be employed between our colleagues and also the 
specific virtues that um, rely uh, that the company needs to follow. So in a workplace specifically, ethics could be um, the code of conduct that just guide um, different things like honesty or um, a, a colleague working with integrity or just being fair to one another, um, keeping each other accountable. If your boss is mismanaging funds, how are you going to deal with that? And also um, respect and yeah, also confidentiality and yeah, confidentiality and compliance. So um, normally we on a day-to-day -day basis, um, we've talked about how on a day-to-day -day basis, we're just caught with different dilemmas and they could be small, small things. Um, so it's a situation where like there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. And it's instead there's like a right or right answer. So that's um, your mind trying to play tricks with you to it's that balance that you talked about between self-interest and following the ethics that are um, that happens. And sometimes we, we cross those lines without knowing it because our self-interest has overcome the ethics, um, the ethics code of conduct. Um, so this could be an example, I think would be things like maybe an NGO uh, is having a project that you know very well is not going to end hunger, but you still apply for the job and do the work because you know it's paying you. Um, so this is an example of, uh, it's an ethical um, dilemma. So it has like a very fine line. You need this job, but at the same time, you know, you're somehow lying to the society in one way. Um, so those are just examples of ethical dilemmas. They could be very different. Um, there are very many every day we're um, put with them. So some of the common or the ethical dilemmas that we have in the tech industry specifically always deal with things like um, data privacy and security. So how do we handle data? And I think there there are always codes of um, there are always yeah there are always like rules on data privacy and security that are stipulated I think by each and every government on how to um, on how to handle data. And then there could also be things like um, the machine learning models that we use um, sometimes uh, the machine learning the model could not be producing like really accurate results but you are the owner of that model and you're trying to sell it so you try to um, lie to, uh, about its efficiency and uh, so yeah that's that's also like a very ethical you want you really want your project to be funded but at the same time it doesn't really give um really good accuracy so it could maybe misinform people or um yeah it could maybe misinform people or uh, cause harm to others so the other common dilemma is um using someone's ip because uh, you want to benefit from it without telling them and this is always um, it's not always fair to the person who owns the IP and it's important for us to try and respect ownership and avoid plagiarism and if we see that we want we can use or we can benefit from someone's IP it's important that we um, try to involve them um in the project so they can also benefit from um from whatever they created and then the other thing is transparency and again another good example is the one we talked about about your model not having a good um accuracy and you're lying to your stakeholders um so it's important to always be honest uh, about the capabilities and the limitations of technology. Um, who knows? Maybe they could just fund you because you've already started, and you want to. Con they want to help you continue build it to like um, to it being like really good and ready for the market. So yeah, and it will also save you a lot of trouble and shame and also money.
Um, yeah, so I'm sure you can think about many other common dilemmas that exist in the tech, in tech, um, or specifically in fintech for you guys. Um, so just other unethical practices that we experience or that happens in an organization is um, things like discriminating one because of maybe the color or maybe um, culture or things like that. They're very unethical, so we should try and treat people with respect. Um, so sometimes you find that you're unfairly terminated for a role because of something that you did not do and maybe they're not offering you compensation. So that's also not a right thing to do for the company. And also if you find yourselves in this managerial positions, um, try to exercise fairness and yeah. Also lying to supervisors, that's a very common thing. Um, taking credit for other, other people's work. And also sometimes when you record more expenses just for you to get more money. And yeah, and also unfair treatment, uh, which is maybe you do a work for someone and then they don't pay you after you've done the job. So um, yeah, those are very unethical practices in the organization. Um, so how exactly should we approach, um, so we've talked about the different dilemmas that we can get, but like, how do we get to that point of saying, this is how we're making the right, um, decision. So, and sometimes it, this can be very hard because sometimes we make a decision because we're not in the shoes of someone on the opposite side so unless we actually feel um the unless we actually see and feel uh and understand the implications that might happen to both um to both parties uh we won't really make a good decision um so uh just some frameworks that can help you to um, make ethical decisions is to first understand or gather information to understand what's happening in all relevant details so in their shoes and in this other person's shoe what exactly is happening and also the other thing that can help us make a decision is to check for legal issues so the pre-written or the documented um, steps uh, or laws and regulations that apply to this certain situation that can help you make a decision. And then look at your choices. Like we mentioned earlier, it's going to really um, need us to employ strategic thinking. And yeah, so look at the choices and what you can do about the situation. If possible, um, list your options and then think about the possible outcomes of each. And then you think very carefully by just evaluating the options that you have and the potential consequences and kind of gauge them and see also how they align with your own personal values and morals. And then finally, you make a decision uh, by choosing the option that feels right and best resolves the situation. So without um, fairness or thinking this is your friend, they're very hard decisions to make, but you have to reason not from your emotional perspective, um, rather from a very logical uh, way of thinking. Um, as we all know, workplaces are not, um, they're not personal, so it's all about work. So in the best interest of work and also trying to um, reflect by acting and learning uh, every time we are faced with a dilemma. So just being aware of our thoughts and understanding that here I'm faced with this dilemma and I have to make a moral decision from this um, situation. So that's also with the art of learning from um, just for future decision making practice um, every time. So um, there are certain ways that organizations create their frameworks. And I think most organizations, if they are ethical, um, 
they always have or create an ethical framework for the company to follow. So they always start with defining their core values. So they should define what they believe and their principles in them. And this will guide them with decisions and also the actions. So it's very important for them to start early on, or even before the company starts, to just ensure that everyone understands and follows them. So also with the hiring process, they need to hire ethically. And it's also very crucial. So besides just looking for skilled individuals and organizations, they should also assess the candidate's value, personal values, and see if it aligns with the company's value. Um, the other thing is for them to create a very um, respectful culture and a very open culture where one does not feel discriminated upon. Um, so this is all by just creating a safe environment where employees feel and they feel respected and valued because that's that way they can be the best the best selves they can and it also um, helps people share their concerns and viewpoints um other thing is by leading with example so you've had you i'm sure you've heard of companies hiring um some companies having a better work culture than the others and you'll find that most people or most employees want to work with a certain company because they love how they, um, the, the employees are always um, well taken care of. Um, so that's with companies leading by example. So the managers especially play a very vital role in this. So they should, because everyone is looking at them, so they should employ or try to embody this company uh, values in the core uh, behavior of in the core of their behavior and also the decisions um so they should also seek an they should also seek an independent output so this could be hiring a different company to come and um to come and just have a look at the whole organization look at its perspective see how it works and um so the organization's can, they can also establish their own independence board in the organization to uh, do this, but having that outside perspective is more important so as not to cloud your judgment. And this also ensures that uh, decisions are thoroughly um, vetted also before being considered. Um, so yeah, that's how organizations make um, create the framework. So we have one last scenario that I would love to hear from you. Um, so imagine you're a machine learning engineer and um, so your team has a diagnostic tool to detect the early onset of cancer. So during testing, you discover that the tool occasionally misdiagnoses or gives um, false positives and your manager still insists on proceeding with the launch to meet the deadline. So what kind of ethical issues do you see here? Um, you can either leave them in the chat. So um, just to start you off, we can think about um, the potential harm for um, this cancer patients. So, and yeah, you can also think about um, misleading misleading doctors and also mm -hmm. the families and also the patients. Um, if you're not if you're not disclosing the tools limitations, so you're providing false information, and you also you might cause harm to the patients. And um, yeah, the other thing I think you can think about is the deadline. So if the manager, from the manager's side, he also has a deadline or stakeholders to keep accountable for. So you as a machine learning engineer will have a very different perspective from the manager. So the manager 
on his side is faced by he has to explain why all the money that he's been given to develop this tool why it's not working to see if possible the company might pull away funds and that's going to lead also you guys to losing your jobs and things like that so he has to also consider a lot of things before he makes a decision so um those are the kind of ethical dilemmas that would exist in such a scenario and um in this scenario so this is it, it it's something that can happen so how would you how would you handle the situation taking after understanding the different perspectives from um different people in the world please anyone Okay, um, no one. So, um, so this maybe you could just consider things like um, raising concerns to the stakeholders. So it's important to always be honest and open with your work. So um, you could, yeah, you could also, you could raise this concerns about the accuracy to the manager and the stakeholders and also let them know that um, it's not ready yet and also so with that you should also like offer uh, suggestions or improvements um, suggestions to or yeah a solution to the stakeholders so just make them aware that you are maybe um, trying to improve it let him know how exactly you're trying to improve this product and so this could include things like um, yeah just maybe improving algorithm more maybe getting data just make them aware and suggest improvements let them know how much longer it might take and also maybe involve the medical experts um, to maybe they can maybe help you get over it. This is if you had not maybe involved them. And then also um, things like documenting your interactions uh, to maybe the ethics committee and uh, just different people. And yeah, anyone who can who has thought of something else? Okay. Uh, so when you think of it, I will report to the higher manager. Um, report, report what to the higher manager? Okay, um, we'll wait for you to write. Um, so I will be reporting to my manager. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It would be better if you add uh, more details on what exactly you're going to report, um, just to make it more clear for us to understand. Um, so let me not take too much time. So this week's challenge um, is also just a scenario on the ethics that you might face in a workplace. So like we mentioned earlier, the whole goal of understanding ethics and practicing ethics in our workplace is to first, um, sometimes our mind forgets that it's faced with an ethical uh, dilemma that it needs to work on to choose and it's important if we become more aware and understand that um, we and just be aware that you're faced with an ethical challenge and practice moral reasoning so for that you have the more you and um, the more you get involved in um, in different scenarios uh, the more you also practice that moral moral reasoning and we hope you employ this in your different workplaces. And also just a tip to always 
um, be mindful of uh, the situations we're faced in. So, and always try to just employ, yeah, moral reasoning while at it. So this is a scenario. So you just have a scenario and the questions that you need to answer. So the questions are designed uh, from the framework of how to, the steps on how to make an ethical decision. So number one, you have to consider the implications of each um, scenario and then also choose the one that you believe is the best ethical. That's after analyzing all the situations and uh, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, just answer the rest of the questions all on a slide, like always. And yeah, anyone has any question? You have access to the documents. Okay, so I believe everyone. Thank you, yeah, sure. Um, so this this marks the end of our career tutorial. Um, thank you guys for being here, and also thanks for being a part of Kefir. Um, so I hope as we go ahead, we'll be we'll try to employ awareness with the daily ethics and try to act from a place of uh, humanity, empathy, and um, yeah, fairness. Um, so yeah, let's all have an amazing week ahead. And if you have any questions, um, my Slack is always open. Uh, yeah, that's it. Have a great evening. You're welcome.